conference champ, all that good stuff when we wrap up the show after the break. Moments away from 17th ranked VCU in Rhode Island, we go big picture in the A-10. And who's going to be the conference champion when the dust settles? My team, begin with you. Well, I'm going to go at VCU. I had a chance to watch them play their first game against Tennessee. And I, I was up close and personal, and they just played so hard. And I said then, this team is going to win the A-10. And one thing about them, they scored the ball better this year. Travion Graham and Melvin Johnson, these two guys can score the basketball. I agree with you, my team. I'm going with VCU. This team is experienced. They create havoc. They're very well coached. And another big thing is they only play Dayton once, and they got them at home, and they're one of the threats to knocking them off the crown. There's no sense in being different just to be different. It is VCU. Even when you talk to a <laughs> Losing coaches in this league, the other guys who like might be in contention for the A-10 championship, they'll tell you VCU is the best team in this league. Barring some sort of surprise I don't see, uh, Shaka Smart will be the guy with the trophy. All right, A-10 sleeper is next, my team. I'm going with Rhode Island. Watch out for E.C. Matthews. He was a top 10 recruit from Detroit, Michigan. Had monster games against Nebraska, Kansas, Providence. Hassan Martin is an undersized four. Long arms makes up for with his athleticism. Tough team this year in the A-10. I'm going with GW, and they've been doing some sleeping of late, not playing very good basketball, but this team has the type of talent and ability to knock off VCU. They already beat Wichita State. If they get it together, they could win the A-10 title. I'll go with Dayton. I mean, this is a team that I talked about earlier. They're sitting here right now with just six scholarship players, nobody taller than six foot six. How about this? Kentucky's starting guards are tall or as tall as Dayton's starting front court. That's what Archie's dealing with here. If he can keep this going, you've got a team that could maybe get to the NCAA tournament. My team, A-10 player of the year. Uh, Briante Weber, we always want to give this award to the scores. I'm going with a defender. He averaged eight points, almost five assists, four rebounds, and four steals a game. I love it, my team, but I got to give it to the score. <laughs> I got to give it to Tra Travion Graham. Experience, he's shooting the three ball great, 45% this year. Really gets to the free throw line. He gets buckets when VCU needs him in big moments. The VCU kids are going to split votes, and it's going to go to E.C. Nice. Matthews. Simply put, <laughs> I think he's the best player in the league. I typically like to go player of the year in a league with the best player off the best team, so that would be a VCU guy. But I think Rhode Island's going to be good enough to put E.C. Matthews in a position to get that hard way. And finally, my team, A-10 coach of the year. I'm going with Shaka Smart. And the reason Surprise. why I said yeah, we never give it give give this award to the best team. I, I saw Coach Izzo go through it. I watched Coach K go through it all the time in the ACC. This guy can coach. Even though he has a good team, he knows how to coach his guys up. That's a good point, but I'm going with Archie Miller. He's got his back against the wall, only 6'6 on the front line. He's going to have to figure out a way to get his team matched up on a nightly basis. Got his team to the Elite Eight last year. I'm going with Archie Miller. Yeah, I'll go with Arch as well. The job he's doing, again, is just spectacular. He's got no roster. He's got no players he's got no depth he's got no size and he's keeping them not only competitive but winning six game winning streak for Dayton heading into tomorrow night's game boy God. what about Mike Lonergan at GW uh, and for sleeper what about Davidson on uh, the road against VCU only lost by six tough place to play Dan Hurley's another one no that's a good call yeah. we are 40 seconds away from tip off quickly who wins this game Rhode Island did they knock off VCU Oh, wait. They got the talent to do it. But I don't think they can pull it off. I, I like VCU. I don't think they're going to be able to take care of the ball well enough. I think VCU in a very, very close game. I'm going to say they're going to do it. With all the upsets we <laughs> saw over the weekend, Duke going down, Kentucky almost going down, Wisconsin going down. I think Rhode Island is primed in this game. I think we're going to watch a star in E.C. Matthews. And I don't think Havoc's as effective on the road. I'm picking Rhode Island. And he's got a good running man. And Hassan Martin, you mentioned, who averages 12 points per game. Wally Zerbiak, Martin Cleaves, Gary. Gary Parrish. I'm Brent Stover. We'll see you back here at the half. Dave Ryan, Steve Wolf have the call of VCU Rhode Island. No one comes into our place of work, our home, right? The place where we, you know, sweat and bleed every day and takes anything from us, ever. We work in here. This is where we live, right here. No one takes anything from us. Let's go get it. Our place of work. This is our home. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. This is the Ryan Center on the Rhode Island campus in Kingston. Tonight we have an Atlantic 10 showdown involving two of the nation's hottest teams. 17th ranked VCU has won eight straight games. URI has won six in a row. 
Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Kingston. Great to have you with us. Dave Ryan alongside Steve Wolf, former star and captain at Xavier. Big game tonight for URI. Dan Hurley, their head coach, told us today this is probably the biggest game in our school history not involving Providence College. It's a big A-10 game, but VCU's got a four RPI. Rhode Island wins this game. It's going to really help their RPI. Our partners become a household term at college basketball. Havoc, that's VCU. They led the nation in steals per game. Three years running a relentless pressure style defense. Uh, everybody knows about Havoc, and look at the numbers that Havoc produces. It's very, very important to be calm and cool and collect when you're playing against VCU teams. Brody playing great basketball this year. Their win streak the longest since 2009. It's the best 8-10 start for the program since 97. As we check the at t fast analysis, they've got a couple players on the roster who could wreak havoc with havoc. Well, the reason why they had that win streak really is E.C. Matthews. 20, 21 points a game in his last couple games. He's averaging 17, leading the conference. But he's not going to be the story here tonight. It's going to be senior Hassan Martin. 11 points, 7 rebounds, nearly 3 blocks per game. He's athletic enough, Rhino, to really take VCU out of havoc. Steve, when we come back, it is game time. Number 17, VCU and Rhode Island reach perfect in A-10 play. Something's got to give. We mentioned this is Rhode Island's best A-10 start since the 96-97 season at 3-0. That year, the Rams went 5-0 before their first league loss en route to a 20-win season. VCU coached by Shaka Smart, just his sixth year leading the Rams. He has 150 wins by year's end. He could have the most wins in college basketball history in the first six years of a coaching career. Starting lineup tonight, let's get a close look at VCU starting five because with Havoc, Coach Smart plays a lot of guys. Twelve different players could see action tonight. Nine different VCU players average double figures in minutes per game. Rhode Island features Gilvitas Boruda, the Rutgers transfer native of Lithuania, a real X factor tonight. He had a career best 14 rebounds last year against VCU. Rhode coached by Dan Hurley, year three, eight wins in his first season, 14 last year, 11 already this year. He told us today the program is progressing the way he hoped it would. A core of solid young players players who now believe they can win every night. He's trying to bring URI back to becoming a national power. Underway tonight from Kingston and the first possession to the visitors in the Black Unis VCU from Richmond, Virginia. Beyonce Weber with a hand. Trevion Graham misfires on a three. Biggie Minnis has the rebound for URI. Biggie Menace is going to be very important because he's going to be controlling the basketball. Always make sure you know who's behind you in the defensive end when you're Biggie Menace. You have to take care of the basketball. Jared Terrell, just a freshman, works up top. And shot blocked away. Mo Alley Cox, one of the leading shot blockers in the A-10 with a rejection. Seven to shoot here. And this is Matthews, the lefty star, front iron this time. And Cox has the rebound. Here comes Weber and VCU on the move. People talk about Havoc on defense, but getting the ball down courtly quickly and knocking down the three ball is Havoc for VCU. Melvin Johnson from Long Range Partner had six threes in the win Saturday for VCU over the weekend against St. Joe's. It's so important for Johnson to get going. You see, Ali Cox come away from Baruta and blocks a shot, and then they get down on the defensive end. Nobody takes Johnson. Now, he's been inconsistent throughout the year, but you're, saying, you're telling me right, the way he's shooting the ball lately, that is a good sign for VCU. Matthews in front Shaka Smart, trouble with a handle, and already Havoc causes an early timeout called by Rohde. They've got 14 to shoot on this possession. Well, Rhino, the most important thing that you have to be careful of in Havoc is not getting trapped, not only by the VCU players, but by the sideline. And you'll see right here, stop it right here. You see that? You said the sideline's right there, and then you have the half-court line back there. Go ahead and roll it through. And then, as soon as the ball is brought down low, everybody, it's like a coyote on a wildebeest going after it. And I'll tell you, that's just really hard. There's, there's really four defenders guarding you instead of two. The second VCU comes out for the morning shoot around, they're in havoc mode. It's loud, it's aggressive. And the last seven games, they've only trailed 18 seconds total. And they enter this game as we talked about 
with an eight-game win streak. Only losses this year to Virginia, Old Dominion, and Villanova. Those teams have combined for two losses all year long. So the RPIs you talked about, Steve, outstanding for the VCU Rams, fourth best in the country entering play tonight. VCU is really emblematic of their coach. He's calm and cool, but I'll tell you what, he goes after him in the locker room, and that barely got that shot off. Matthews does score just before the shot clock violation, but look at Weber off the main field goal. I missed that time. Cox cannot corral the offense. A rebound, but Weber to steal. He's on pace to become the all-time leading steal master in college basketball history. He now needs 27 more for the all-time record. Rhino, he had nine in the game. Oh. Nine steals. It's a so race. Floats and hits. Briante Weber averages 4.1 steals a game, leading the nation coming into this one tonight. More defensive pressure. Mo Alley Cox is all over. The Rhode Island Rams try to get anywhere close to the rat basket here. Rhode Island took the ball out very quickly after that make to get it up court and still not able to get transition basket. Jared Terrell had the game-winning free throws at the end of the Duquesne game Saturday at the Plumbo Center in Pittsburgh. Overtime win. Well, the last second win for UI in that one. Baruta fouled the way up, and Govitas, the Rutgers transfer, will shoot a couple. That's important. Baruta is shooting the ball at 62%, but he is not doing a very great job rebounding the basketball. At that time, at least in that possession, they didn't get a steal as you look at those numbers. How about the way that they are able to come from behind? Briante Weber is long and lean, and he's quick. The guy in nine steals, he's hit six steals. Now second, BCU second in the NCAA in steals behind West Virginia. Second miss there by Maruda. Two-time A-10 Defensive Player of the Year, Beyonce Weber leads the charge. Graham leads the charge this time. Travion Graham, the senior in the preseason A-10. Player of the year's first bucket. You just can't let that happen. You cannot let BCU get straight to the rim. I think you worry about them beating you with a three, but you can't let them get in the paint. Biggie Minnis, the Texas Tech transfer, floats and banks at home for his first bucket. Good penetration by Minnis. But now the more important thing is making sure you stop BCU getting in the paint. Steal, Hassan. And a miss. Graham for Weber. Back on the three. Briante Weber has loose change again. He'll float way too strong. Maruda. Defensive rebound. Here comes Rody. This place is rocking. Maruda offensive foul. Ryan, we talked about in the fast AT&T fast analysis. Hassan Martin defensively. He was Johnny on the spot. He gets up and gets his crowd into the action. Defense leading the offense for the Rams of Rhode Island. He was way up there, partner. Yeah, you, you look at that Barutas. Baruta came down court, a little bit out of control, but you gotta, you gotta give it to him. That's what you have to do against BCU. Took him right to the ba uh, basket. BCU stepped up and took the charge. Terry Larrier, Justin Tillman in for the first time for the Rams. Larrier, front iron, the VCU Rams, that is. They're three A-10 teams, Fordham, VCU, and Rhodey. They're the Rams. Peruta hangs and hits off the glass. I think they might have been, they were warning 
Rhode Island getting, you know, a delay a game. It is emotional at the Ryan Center here, partner, tonight. We're just underway. Yovitas Baruta, former All Big East rookie team member at Rutgers, for a bucket. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Six-game win streak for Rhode Island, eight for BCU coming in. For Rhodey, the best since 2009-2010. That year under Jim Barron, they had an eight-game win streak. That team won 26 games and made the NIT semifinals. It's been a long time, though, since Rhodey has made the big dance. 1999, got in Lamar Odom playing for uh, Jim Herrick coach Jim Herrick back then. The Rams, yeah. but, I mean, this is a really solid program. This isn't a Lamar Odom program. This is a whole team environment that Dan Hurley has put on. And uh, just to clarify, Mike Sanzier came over and told us the reason uh, that they stopped action was because they had a bench warning on Rhode Island. So media timeout, the 16-minute mark. Burgess had a strip, and it's right back to Rhode Island. Jaquan Lewis, a sophomore from Dixon, Tennessee, small town northwest of Nashville, is in for the first time for VCU. They are very deep. We could see 11, could see 12 VCU Rams in the game tonight. Havoc, a lot of guys play. Let's see if they get Martin into the game. Right on cue, puck from behind. Big play defensively by Tillman, the freshman, for the VCU Rams. How about that? Burgess, other end pulls up, rattles out a three. Rhode Island running and before the shot put up there by Jarvis Garrett, the freshman, a foul call on VCU. You know, what VCU does so well is they have helped defense, and you see the help coming from behind. Tillman loses his man, and then they start the break, and they get it out. The biggest problem right now for VCU is that they are anemic from behind the arc. They're one of six. Need to get the ball inside. And every time Rhode Island comes down the court, they're going into the paint. It's so important. And yesterday, Dan Hurley talked to us about this. We have to take it to them. They try, VCU tries to intimidate us. We got to punch them back. Oh, Martin, good catch in traffic. And he's held down low. They're going to count that basket, too. They'll see a great pass down low to a cutting Martin. Martin going up strong. On the other side of the basket. Now they're going to take that basket away, and they're going to say it was a, a two-shot foul. I think just a foul on the floor there against BCU. On Larry. All right, back to play. Here's Jarvis Garrett, freshman from Milwaukee. Top eight, ten recruiting classes this year for Rhodey. Catch and stuff. He can elevate. Coming off a double double against Duquesne. 15 points, 10 rebounds. The sixth of his career. Good ball movement by Rhode Island. Quick, crisp passes. Trevion Grand, the freight train, as he's known, is fouled on the way to the basket. The leader of Havoc and the senior. Well, look how quick the passing is. As soon as the double team breaks up, you see the beautiful pass from Buchanan to Martin, and Martin was ready for it, cutting to the basket. Really nice pass by Buchanan. Gravion Graham, senior from Temple Hills, Maryland, outside D.C. Has one more free throw. We had a nice chat with him after the VCU shoot around this morning. He is on pace if he can score in between 19 and 20 points a game for the rest of his career to become the all-time leading VCU scorer. And he said to us, yeah, it'd be nice. I want to win. I want to go back and bring this program back to the Final Four. That's more important to me. I like that. In the last 11 games, Rhino, he's averaging 18 points a game. So that's very, very conceivable. But like you said, these guys all want to win. Both of these coaches exude winning. Garrett drives. Great leave. But a miss there by Jarrell Rochelle. The transfer from Rice can't finish. Another beautiful pass in the lane. You've got to finish on that. Jarvis Garrett coming in and making an impact. Right, freshman off the bench. Great feed. Larrier. 
Top rated recruit in the A-10 this year. The freshman had that shot misdirected. Oh. Matthews, scores two. EC Matthews, the lefty scoop to the hoop. Three on the other end. That's just a beautiful shot by Lewis. Wow. Lewis has 60% of his points this year. In the last 11 games, he's been an offensive juggernaut. They got the ball out very quickly after that made basket and got it up court. Jarvis Garrett can't finish. Stick back for Rochelle. First two for the junior, originally from Frankfurt, Germany. Now it's Larrier. Double team, good defensive pressure for Matthews. Jaquan Lewis lost the handle. It's out of bounds. VCU keeps it 19 to shoot. Now watch Weber get the ball out of bounds. Weber's coming in. He's going to get right over here. Go ahead and roll it right after the main basket. Well, wrong replay, but that was the, the one thing I wanted to say is VCU is getting the ball out after made baskets, and they are getting it out before Rhode Island can set up that defense. And, and that's one area that you can score if you're Rhode Island. But you got to get back the other way on defense. You can't let them have fast break passes. Havoc has Doug Brooks in for the first time. Sophomore from Lake Wales, Florida. Handles here. Cox got caught up. And Brooks, front iron on three. He's here for 13 shooting so far in the game. Not effective at all. Now they can't shoot from long range. You talked about it. The Rams will struggle. Not a great inside team. What happens when you miss outside jump shots? It's an easy long rebound for the defensive guards. And that's what's happened. They're able to be one and done. Buchanan return pass. He'll shoot a couple. DJ Buchanan, the only remaining player from the Jim Barron era. And former roadie coach now leads Canisius. When you talk about TJ Buchanan, I have to listen to Coach Hurley's show last night. He said that there's a lot of times Buchanan embarrasses his teammates in the film session. And, and that was a comment about how hard he plays. As you look at Coach Hurley, he played that way, and he loves the blood, sweat, and tears that are left on the court by TJ Buchanan. Coach told us today that TJ has been playing like a man for us. We would not be 3 0 in league play without he and the way Hassan Martin has played in the early going. And a win Saturday in Pittsburgh against Duquesne, Coach Hurley's team was down 13, had a great second half. They were awful from the floor in the opening 20. And he said to us today, we would not have won that game last year. We've changed a lot, attitude, and the belief we're going to win games now. You know, I, I have to say the same thing with the Florida game. I don't think they'd win that game. Uh, and that was at home. But this is a team that Dan Hurley has said take a couple of years to really let things settle down here. Now he's able to recruit his guys. Uh, you can see the large crowds that are coming into the games. He's got Rhode Island, you know, poised to make a run at the A-10. Here's Brooks. He'll drive the paint. And travels right back to the Rhode Island Rams. Third turnover for Shaka Smart's VCU Rams in the early going here. Right now, I think it's so important that you look at strategies and game plans. Rhode Island is taking the ball every time in the paint. They're getting it to the basket. Zero three-point jump shots. VCU, on the other hand, is two for eight from behind the arc. Melvin Johnson and Jaquan Lewis have hit so far from long range for VCU. Canada senior from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Western part of the state inbounds to Garrett. Recruiting net is reaching pretty wide these days for Rhode Island. Baruta, speaking of which, from Lithuania. Bump foul call. Jared Guest, senior from Columbia, South Carolina, picks up his first. Timeout in Kingston. Let's listen in, find out what Dan Hurley's got in mind in the Rhode Island huddle.
Dan Hurley is setting up something out of bounds. It's so important that he continues to get these guys to realize they have to go inside. And, and I really think that VCU is, you know, not utilizing Graham and, and Co Ali Cox. You've got to get the ball in the paint on both ends of the court, especially with the three balls and dropping. 14 of the 16 roadie points, Parker, case in point, in the paint so far. That's been a big factor. Minutes to kick out. Long range three from Jarvis Garrett. Back on her. Lewis is running, stripped away. Garrett a piece of it, and a bump call on Brooks on the sideline. That was just a great defensive play. Coming down the court, Garrett strips the ball, and to add insult to injury, the foul going on Brooks, going the other way. Jarvis Garrett tied his career high Saturday that win against Duquesne, the big comeback against the Dukes. And he'll take a seat now and he gets a nice round of applause here at the Ryan Center. Typically what Dan Hurley likes to do is he has his goals. They want to keep the opponents to 38% shooting. With that kind of defense, they're ready to do that. Bruno's shot blocked away again. Mo Alley Cox down low, as they say at the Seagull Center, Richmond. Mo says no. Steve Wolf, <laughs> he can block lots of shots. Look at how high he gets there for another rejection. That's Third block of the game already. I love that chant in the Seagull Center. Mo says no. Inbound play, Jared Terrell, a freshman, has his first two. That is the second basket of the year on the defense of VCU under the opponent's basket. Brand a chance for a three-point play for the freight train, Travion Graham. A special move. Watch this right now. Baruta cannot hold him. He bump fakes and really strong and drops it through. And, and that's a problem area for Rhode Island because Baruta now has two fouls. Graham entered tonight's game. Eighth all time. ECU in scoring. Completes a three-point play. He's got half a dozen tonight. Has 1,619 career points for the Rams. He's been a great one. A four-year player makes a big difference in a very crucial conference game like this tonight. That was a double fist. Man-to-man -man defense, you trap at the wings. Good. Execution, bringing the ball up court. Here's Matthews, co-player of the week in the A-10 this week. 10 to shoot, EC. Come on, Cox. Too much dribbling, gotta move that ball. Matthews for three, whoa. Short and wide right, no good. That's a bad possession. You don't wanna to dribble too much, and that's exactly what Shaka Smart wants him to do. It was a little bit, was that wide to the right? <laughs> Still in football mode after watching the national championship last night. How about Ohio State? It's amazing. I live in Cincinnati and I'm, you know, if your team doesn't go and you live in Ohio, you're oh, a Buckeye. That man. was great to watch it. Here's Weber. Closing in the all-time steals record in basketball history. Would that be something? It's just amazing. It's, it's so important because they, they, they get some steal and they capitalize on it. On every turnover, they average a little bit over a point. So about 20 points a game, they get on turnovers. Less than 10 to shoot from Elva Johnson. He'll drive, blocked away. Hassan Martin, another rejection. Buchanan running. No finish this time. There, Terrell couldn't get that to go. Layup did everything but drop through. Here comes BCU. I'd like to see him go back to Trevian Graham. Get him involved in the offense. He's your leading scorer. Playing against Buchanan, but Johnson, that's a long, really long three. That rattles out. And that was a bomb nearly on the sideline. Matthews, a little crossover move. Hangs and hits. AC Matthews, chance for a three point play. Now, watch how quickly Rhode Island gets the ball up court. Soon as Matthew gets it, he knows he's got one on one coverage. Right there, Weber is slow getting over there. And that was a great take and body control by Matthews. He's going to his strong hand. You got to make sure you cut off that left hand. 
Seven points for EC. Out of end. Good defensive hustle again, Justin Tillman. Can't bring it in. When I look at, you know, the first 10, 11 minutes of this game, the reason why VCU is struggling, the reason why Rhode Island is playing well, is that Rhode Island is matching the intensity of VCU. And we heard that in the voice of Dan Hurley, pregame speech in the Rhodey locker room. He was pumped. Biggie Minnis hangs, and it's foul. Rante Weber picks it up. That was a really nice play. At the end of the play, Biggie Minnis moved over to the left. Now watch his body when he goes up. He goes straight up. This is an offensive foul, and then he moves to the left a little bit and averts the head-on collision, is able to get to the free throw line for two. Biggie's got one more. Last eight games, 26 assists and 11 turnovers for the Texas Tech transfer. Native of Philadelphia. It's been great so far for Biggie Menace as he's not turned the ball over. He's had, a, you know, really good success, you know, in the last eight games, not turning the basketball over. That's been huge. Marrier is fouling away the basket, trying to cut into Rhode Island's largest lead of the night at eight. Hassan Martin picks up a foul. That's his first. And Terry Larrier, freshman from the Bronx. Five double-figure scoring games. Highest rank recruit, top 40 at VCU since Kendrick Warren in 1991. Been a long time. He's a good one. What's great about Larrier is that he's 6'8", but he can play guard. I mean, he's not a, a traditional inside player. He can bring on the perimeter, he can guard on the perimeter, he can handle the basketball. That's a matchup problem for a lot of teams. Misses two. Jared Guest in, Graham is out for VCU here. Press break, successful. Biggie Minnis, had it blocked. Tillman a piece of it. Biggie regains, runner away short, and knocked out of bounds. Official save by Larrier. Rhodey keeps it. Well, Ali Cox is just a swatting machine. That's Tillman. Tillman get in there. That's the fourth block by VCU, but the reason why they have so many opportunities is because they're getting in the paint. Oh, Rhode Island is going to the basket almost every time. Yes, defensive rebound on the Matthews. Misfire on the three ball. Lewis pulls up, needs help. Tillman's got a height advantage on Buchanan down low. Johnson with the basketball, you gotta look inside. You can get it with the dribble, but the, the, the low post is open. VCU scores 77 points a game. They have struggled tonight. Johnson spins, tough shot, way short. That was not a good shot. Too much creating on that. Smart move by Menace, bringing it back out, setting it back up. You got the lead up by eight. You take your time and, and don't do that. Another steal. Guess good hands. Comes to Tillman. Melvin Johnson runs. Lays it up and in chance for a three-point play. The end one for Melvin Johnson. Rhino, that is havoc right there. Getting the ball out. Defense creating offense. Johnson for two. It's a rarity in this eight-game win streak for VCU. They're actually losing this one tonight by six. Tonight at 11.30 Eastern, step off the court and into the studios. Our team of players and coaches break down a full night of college basketball. It's inside college basketball only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Case in point here, Mr. Wolf. 18 seconds they trailed total, and tonight already, 8.07. And, and that's, there's very, it's a simple answer. VCU forces nearly 18 turnovers a game so far. URI only has three, and URI is beating up VCU in the paint 18 to eight. So it's it's very important for VCU to understand that you gotta defend that inside. URI is not dropping the three ball. They're not a good three-point shooting team. Melvin Johnson trying to complete the three-point play. Cannot, and Martin has the rebound. VCU trying to get to 13 straight 
games. That's the longest win streak ever under Shaka Smart, now in his sixth year, back in 2012-2013. Well, they've got their hands full here tonight against Rhode Island. Rochelle is back into the game for Rhodey. Hassan Martin travels. That's really good defense by Graham. They were battling down the low block, and Martin was pushing on, pushing on Graham, and then Graham moved away. And when Graham moved away, Martin tried to push and fell backwards. Good play by Graham. Graham has half a dozen to lead BCU here tonight. Doesn't get a lot of room. Martin to help. Led the Atlantic 10 and blocks last year. Hassan Martin. Blocked away again. It's Tillman. I mean, the athletes we're seeing defensively, Steve Wolf, on either side of the floor. It's impressive. It's count punter, counter punch. It's punch, counter punch right there. Hassan Martin blocking it. And then Tillman saying, hey, you blocked my buddy shot. Coming down and swatting away. Garrett's little layup. You know, on the block so far, nine rejections in the game already here with six and a half to go in the first half. That's a I, lot. I think that really lends us to what both coaches want. The intimidation factor by VCU and then Rhode Island not backing down. So it's a battle. Terrell to nobody. Brooks the pick. Doug Brooks. Blocked away again. It's another one. Terrell with a rejection. It's like a plan on an eight-foot ramp. Man. Ten in the game. Tillman almost travels. Regains and puts it in. Nice shot there for the freshman from Detroit, Justin Tillman. Talking to Shaka Smart today. He's telling us how good he thinks Tillman's going to be. So versatile and strong. You saw that nice move to the basket. And that was six minutes to play in this first half. For VCU, they want to try to create some turnovers to get some momentum. You see right there, Matthews with the walk. That's one turnover. And for Rhode Island, you want to try to maintain that lead. They're up 22 to 14. It's a 4 0 run now for VCU. Ram for Jaquan Lewis. Here's Tillman up top. Graham tries a three. Short and hit. Boy, they struggled. From two and three tonight. Terrell Rochelle, tough shot. Bumped on the way to the basket. And a transfer from Rice in Conference USA will shoot a couple here. That's typically not a smart move when you're playing traditional basketball. A one on three fast break. But when you're playing against BCU, the idea is to beat them down defensively. And that time, it worked out. Rochelle able to get to the basket and get the foul. First foul a moment ago on Melvin Johnson. Three point ace for VCU. Does Havoc work when you're losing by a lot? I'll tell you, when you're at home, it's a lot easier. When you're on the road, it's hard uh, because the crowd really gets behind you when you're at home. And, and they, they've met up right now with a Rhode Island team that is playing as hard as, as VCU. Not many teams can play as hard as VCU. One more for a shot. It's a great point. At the Seagull Center, Richmond, VCU sold out 60 games in a row. It is a dent, a very tough place for visitors to play as Allie Cox returns. What a great crowd here tonight at the Ryan Center. Energy. Students just getting back on campus, but the student section is packed behind the basket tonight. I think that the folks around Rhode Island really want to have a VCU-type program. They have a beautiful facility. It's bigger. It's nice. It's in a great area. And Dan Hurley has been building on that. And this is only year three. This is one of the best coaches in A-10. Lewis pulls up front iron. Matthews defensive glass for Rhodey. <laughs> E.C. Matthews needs some help. And Burgess may have reached. Jordan Burgess picks up a foul. And that was a bailout because there was no way Matthews was stuck. And nobody was coming back to the ball. 
What Dan Hurley said today in practice was, don't be casual. You know, when you get stopped, yell fire. Yell fire. You need to, somebody else to come out and help you out. Dan Hurley was talking about that Saturday they played, they had a tough game. They haven't been able to practice much, and this is a hard team to prepare for because they do so much defensively. Eight points in the game for E.C. Matthews, the leader of all active A-10 players. 14 career 20-plus point games. He's got five this year. Real young star in the Atlantic 10, the sophomore from Detroit. He and Hassan Martin. A couple sophomores are the core of this Rhode Island team that could make a real run this year. Had a lot of talent. But this is the game that Dan Hurley in Rhode Island has pointed to the last couple of years as far as the big game. You've got a 17th rated team, a team with a national record, uh, reputation. This is the opportunity they wanted to get. Lewis looks back to Shaka Smart, gets the offensive set. Johnson and Terrell reach there on the handoff attempt by Mo Alley Cox. Jared Terrell picks up his first. Coach Hurley yelling out, that's what I want to do, that's what I want to see. Now, if you're VCU, you got four minutes, you, you have to get some rhythm. They really just haven't gotten a rhythm established. And a lot of times that rhythm comes out of their tur the turnovers that they create. Johnson has not really gotten that jump shot to go. They're two from 10 behind the arc. 16 fouls on Rhode Island. Alec Cox, high post, back for Lewis. The sophomore, a little pick and roll. Mo Alec Cox, and he lays it in. Boy, that was just a great pass by Lewis. He's getting stronger and stronger each and every game. We talked about his offense, how it's improved in the last 11 games, but his passing, that was a beautiful lead. Rally Cox down low. Beautiful feed down low and the finish for TJ Buchanan. Jared Terrell with a no look. Johnson pulls up on a rim and doesn't get a roll. Batted around. Lewis resets. Melvin Johnson is out of sync, and even talking to Coach Smart, he says, I need him to be more consistent. He's such a good shooter, but he's struggling. He's had games where he's one of six, and then he's had games where he's six of seven from behind the arc. Buchanan running, and it's foul on the way to the basket. Fast break, pressure, offensively and defensively for Dan Hurley's Rhode Island Rams. VCU's in some trouble tonight at Kingston. Coming up on 18 to the half, Brent Stover, Wally Zerbiak, Mateen Cleaves, Gary Parrish left stores, highlights, and more. It's all coming up on at and at the half. Now you talk about a block party, Rhino. They're bringing it here to the Dave, I mean the Thomas Ryan Center. Nice defense, no intimidation. As far as Rhode Island, really trying to make sure that they don't let BC get to the basket. Between the two teams, they average about 10 blocks a game combined. And uh, you can see the graphic right there. VCU has six. Rhode Island has four, so they're already at the 10. It's just sort of an indicator on how this game has been played, the level, the intensity. Mo oh, Alley Cox leads the way with three rejections in the game. And Son Martin had two blocks already in our first half. Sorry about that mistake, the, the Thomas Ryan Center where we're playing, not the Dave Ryan Center. <laughs> so they need the Dunkin' Donuts. I'm not the, the point of my career <laughs> where, where arenas will be named after me, but I appreciate the sentiment. Thanks for the thought. Officials going to the video here to see a little more on that last sequence. Are they looking at the, at the clock? There's a foul. Some. Oh. See Jarrell Rochelle taking that to the basket. Oh, 
the way you were shooting today at shoot around, I thought maybe they might name this place after you. Nice little left in your southpaw. I forgot that you got that added attraction on your game. Thankfully, the pictures that made Twitter were still photos, <laughs> not anything that showed the results of the ball in the air, most of which did not go in. But thanks for the thought again. It's, I appreciate the inaccuracy <laughs> to the nation. Thanks for that. All right, so we're all set. And Buchanan, who was fouled just before the break, has one more. Had a nice chat with TJ today. Came over and introduced himself, as he does before every TV broadcast in that last couple years. He's a senior and a great leader. He said, we're looking forward to Havoc tonight. We can't wait to face him in our house. And he even said that he goes, we, we present a little bit of Havoc, too. And, and I they have. have. And they have. And he is really the leader of this group. Don't look at statistics because they lie when they talk about how important T.J. Buchanan is to this team. Your eyes got to be ecstatic with the first half so far. Graham hangs. Really tough shot for the freight train. Travion Graham, he's got eight in the first half. Everybody talks about how he's improved his three-point shooting percentage, and he has a ton. But he still is the freight train. He gets that rim, and he is solid. That's his game. Pressure. Rochelle. The end one. Jarrell Rochelle's had himself a half here. Watch Rochelle use his body. And he basically picks his man with his shoulder and throws it over the shoulder to get the end one. Of late, the transfer from Rice has not had a lot of minutes. Does have three 10-point games this year, all in non-A-10 play. And all Rhode Island wins. He's got six points in the first half. Largest lead here for Rhodey at nine. And what's good for Dan Hurley is he can keep him in the game as a big body, as long as he's playing that well. But there's not anybody right now on the court that's been able to stop Trevion Graham the last two possessions. Into double figures now. Freight Train's got 10. Taking over. He's a senior. Had a nice chat with him today, as we talked about after the shooting round. He said, yeah, I'd love to play 35, 36 minutes a game. He plays 28. But there's so many pieces to the puzzle in Havoc, he realizes, I'll get my minutes, get my points, and we'll win. I'm fine with that. Rochelle has been something else. Eight first half points for Jarrell Rochelle. Credit E.C. Matthews with the pass, taking the ball down court taking all the pressure, and then being able to find Rochelle. It was wide open on the low block. A lot of defensive breakdowns for VCU in the opening 20. You knew Coach Smart and his staff will emphasize that in the halftime locker room. Clear out for Travion, 10 to shoot. Passes to Larry instead. It's a long range shot, and the freshman buries a two. It's a nice one in the veins for the freshman. Mm. Biggie Minnis floats. Tough shot. Unable to finish in traffic. Larry running. Oh. Not this time. All right, how about Melvin Johnson crashing the offensive glass foul on the way up? So discouraging. You know, you play good defense, you come down the offensive end, you miss your shot and Havoc is coming down at you so quick, it's a blur. It's a, it's a blur how fast they get the ball out. Johnson's got one more. Valerio's shot was a three, by the way, moments ago. First points of the game for the freshman from the Bronx. You talk about Melvin Johnson, I mean, Shaka Smart said he has had one of the best camps or the summers this, this year working harder than anybody else in the team and when you look about Johnson as, as he is right now two for eight he is struggling but he does not stop he's relentless and you know he's one of those guys that shoots till he gets hot and then he shoots till he gets cold he'll just keep shooting yep he's one of four from beyond the arc so far in the first half under a minute to go in the opening 20 tonight from Kingston big a 10 showdown Matthews hangs. A little short this time. Lefty runner. Biggie Minnis, the runner in the lane. Unable to hit. Jonathan Williams into the game for the first time for VCU. 
Johnson lost it. Matthews running. The left delay in. E.C. Matthews in the double figures. From hoops to hockey, the diamond of the gridiron, the morning's most outrageous team has you covered. Don't miss Boomer and Carton weekday morning starting at 6 Eastern, only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Time out with 20.5 ticks, Steve, remaining in the first half. I would imagine Dan Hurley and his Rams have played their best half of the year. I really do believe that they have played their most energetic half. Was it offense, defense? They played with the most intensity that I have seen them play, and they needed every ounce of it. They have really come out and accepted the punch thrown by Havoc. Shaka Smart's Rams only 3 of 12 from long range in this first half. Officials did take a closer look at the Larrier three, and it was, in fact, a three-pointer. Just barely outside the line. There's 20 seconds left. Shot clock is off. It's important for VCU to get a good shot at the basket. And if you're Rhode Island, you want nothing in the paint. No surprise, Graham's got it. Five seconds left in the half. Dravion Graham the take, and it was knocked aside. And then called out of bounds. Now the officials will confer. Graham thought that was tipped out of bounds, and it is overruled. In fact, it will be VCU ball at 2.3 seconds to go. Let's take a look. It's hard to see. Brian Kersey overruled it. Trevion Graham thinking he got foul called. That was, he just lost it out of his hand. Final moments. Graham launches. Oh, and that's it. That was a direct line from where I'm sitting, and that looked like that was, a, that was in the basket. A fantastic first half of basketball for Dan Hurley's Rams. They lead number 17 VCU with an eight-game win streak, 35-28. AT&T at the half is next on CBS Sports Network. Upset alert in Kingston at the Ryan Center. Through 20, Hassan Martin and company. An outstanding effort. First half for Rhodey. They are 7 0 at home this year, an eight game home win streak dating back to February 19th of last year. A loss to St. Joe's in playing great basketball so far through 20. Welcome back to Kingston, everyone. Dave Ryan alongside Steve Wolfie led Xavier to its first ever regular season and conference tourney champ. Well, you talk about what Dan Hurley told us today after the Rhodey practice. It's one of our biggest games in school history against the team with a number four RPI. And have they ever delivered through 20 minutes? I'll tell you what, they match the intensity of VCU. Now, the key for the second half is can they do it in the second half? Well, Havoc averages 11.1 .1 steals per game. That's third best in the country for VCU coming in as we check the numbers through 20 minutes, only three steals. And the fast break points, just a couple. It's been a big factor. And of course, points in the paint might be the biggest stat in the opening half. Yeah, I tell you what, I, I think it's impressive that all of the points from the field were in the paint and you'll see as E.C. Matthews has done a really nice job of handling the basketball. Sometimes I think he over dribbles, but they're doing a great job of good ball movement. And against VCU's Havoc, you cannot hold onto the ball too long. You've got to make quick passes and try to get going straight to the hoop. Dan Hurley and Rhode Island have won six in a row. Their best win streak since 2009 here in Kingston. VCU has won eight straight. Which team continues the win streak in this key A-10 showdown? We'll find out in the next 20 minutes. Rhode Island leads the A-10 at field goal percentage defense, only giving up 27% from behind the arc, and tonight VCU is shooting at 23%. Well, 
the statistics are holding true as far as where the rankings are in the defense. Early Ram turnover. That is your Rams. What's the other Ram team in the country? Colorado State. That's right. Four teams have Rams as a nickname. Three of the A-10. I mean, come on. Come on, Rams. Coach U Stacy doing a good job out of here. Sure Colorado. is. Love watching Tim Miles. And then the Nebraska team came in here too. You talk about some good talent coming in this year, and they're gonna get Trevion Graham for the turnover. He picked up his foot, calling for walking. Fifteen forty-three and counting for Shaka Smarts. VCU Rams trailing after seven games, only 18 total seconds. Part of the eight-game win streak for VCU coming in. So some foreign territory. You gotta wonder how they respond to being behind. Just hasn't happened much to them this year. Well, the guy that didn't do very much in the first half, I expect to have a better second half is Briante Weber as they're getting the foul on Johnson. Guarding a little bit too close. Referees making sure they get control of this game. Briante Weber just really was not into the flow of it. And, and as we talked off, off camera, is that he has got to be one of those leaders that gets them going defensively. Only one for four from the field, two points. And of course, the player who will break the all-time college basketball steals record. Not as active as I think Shaka Smart would like so far. Matthews lines up a three ball, back iron, and Weber has the weak side rebound. Oh, nice pass by Weber. Alley Cox down low for the big hammer. Briante Weber just ball faked a little bit. Got the defender going away from Alley Cox, and Alley Cox had an easy two. Second assist for Briante Weber. Had only one steal in the opening half. Well, as Steve Wolf correctly predicted. Early Weber a factor. Pick and roll, Baruta loose, blocked away. Travion Graham the help, but there was a whistle. We see Weber coming down court. Stop right there. This position's going to be wide open, and you're going to see Ali Cox go right there. Nobody picks him up. And a nice recognition by Briante Weber. He's such a leader and he's a great kid. You know, we've had a chance to talk to him, you know, a number of times. This is, you know, probably the 10th game I've done at VCU, and he's always gracious, hospitable, humble kid. Martin, nice catch in traffic. Baruta over the back. That's going to be his third. That's a big development, too, because yeah, is. Baruta's done a great job, but uh, I guess right now, if you're looking at it, Danny Hurley's looking and saying Rochelle didn't do a bad job when he came in for Baruta. Rochelle had a great first half, so well, he sure did. he's got some options. Terrell Rochelle had eight points in the opening half. Burgess, another miss, and a foul down low. Going to be a home call on Rhode Island. It's going to be Baruta. I think that's going to be his fourth. It is his fourth, and a moment ago he looked to Dan Hurley when he got his third. Coach Hurley said, stay in. We need you, but play smart. And he's just like that, got his fourth foul. Two plus minutes into the second half. That's key. Oh, look at that play. Play the hands. Terrell thought it was stolen with a foul by Weber. It's out of bounds off the leg of Buchanan on the sideline. Graham is hurt. Graham is hurt. They're calling for a trainer. Something's going on there. But watch right here. It's an inadvertent kick. So that is not a, a violation. It's an inadvertent kick. And Buchanan went down the sidelines going after the loose ball. Really hustling down the court. Looks like, well, there's a takeout, and the call was against Buchanan. Then Weber comes and gets the face of Travion Graham on the way down. And immediately, Jordan Burgess signals for the trainer. Boy, hope his legs didn't get caught up. And yeah. It's a serious injury. He went right down on an ankle. Yeah. Grabbing the left leg. He's sitting up. That's good news. His, his head coach, very concerned. With the team's leading scorer and rebounder, Travion Graham. You see the concern on. That's good that he's getting up, but you see if he can put any pressure on it. He's a competitor, man. I'll tell you what. Buchanan comes over and gives him a pat, saying, I hope you're okay. You know, a lot of times it's of a high ankle sprain. 
You can tape that back up. You just don't want it to get cooled off. It'll hurt tomorrow, but as you worry about being a break, he's walking around on it right now. As soon as you sit down, though, it's going to get cold. It's going to tighten up, and he will not come back in unless they can retape it. He's saying he's okay. He's telling the trainer he's okay. Leading score for VCU tonight. Ten points for Graham on four of eight shooting. Out for now. Here's Weber. Sloppy again in the half court for VCU. That is called a backcourt violation. Off the leg of the Rams of VCU. Shaka Smart said that was tipped by the defense. Let's take a look. That is the third chop down knockaway. Good call. It was by Jared Jared uh, Terrell. He's doing, a, he's doing a great job of reacting when guys are coming to the lane. He's given a hand's worth of help. He had one underneath the basket, and he's had two in the last two possessions. You're right. Freshman from Weymouth, Massachusetts, near Boston's had a great game so far. Traveling call that time, though, against Rhodey. That's right back to VCU. Well, Burgess was a man right there. He would not let EC Matthews break through that trap. Show. Weber's going to have to come through right now because their leader is sitting on the bench and may not be coming back. Another block for Hassan Martin, who's just been everywhere. Martin set a Rhode Island freshman record for block shots last year with 80 rejections. Graham's going to stretch out that ankle. He Looks is like he's in pain. into some pain. Yeah. You know that the, the high ankle sprain is worse than it feels worse than if you broke it. It, it is the worst pain. You've had that before? Oh, uh, that's my only problem I had in college was the, the ankles rolling the ankles, and it's uh, it's something if you can. But he's doing a heel court stretch, trying to get ready, but I have to retape him. Five the shoot here for Johnson. Mo Alley Cox spins, can't hit back iron. Hassan Martin had a rebound. Rhode Island. Those early blocks by Martin have created havoc for VCU in the paint. E.C. Matthews on a great feed. He's got the great finish. 13 to lead the way for Rhode Island. VCU's in some real trouble here as Johnson is fouled on the way to the basket. And the leading scorer and rebounder is injured. Well, you'll and see, they've been out of sync anyway all game. Uh, you'll see right here on the, on the left side of your screen, you'll see E.C. Matthews coming through. The trap is at the top. There's not enough players to cover. And the nice dish by Buchanan to E.C. Matthews cutting to the basket. That is ball movement, Rhino, and that is how you beat Havoc. Key moment here for Rhodey as well. And Son Martin has picked up his third foul. So he's out. Maruta with four, Martin with three. Well, what, what happens when you block some shots early in the game, you start being tentative on the offensive end going in there. VCU and Allie Cox was using the hook shot, but he knew Martin was back there. They have not had many points in the paint here against Rhode Island. Weber from the free throw line, too strong. And Matthews up high. And a sophomore from Detroit can rebound as well. Almost five boards a game for the Rhode Island Rams leading scorer. He's a weapon. You know what? He's got so much body control. He can handle the basketball. He's big. He's strong. He's got all the tools, really, to go against a solid defense like this. And what he's done is he's been able to go up to the basket and hang and use body control. Holding foul called on Burgess. That's his third big moment of the game. Hustle for Graham and Buchanan and Trevion injured for BCU. Have either, Dan. Dave. Rhode Island has the best defense in the A-10 coming in, only 57.4 points a game allowed. Defense great again here tonight. We have the fastest scores and updates for VCU, Rhode Island, and all teams with the CBS Sports app. The fastest app for sports fans. Download the CBS Sports app now. Dan Hurley, year three. What a turnaround at Wagner in just his second year, won 25 games, including a win at Pitt, and that really got him on the map for some big jobs. Took over for Jim Barron. 
And he's en route to a great season. Are they a postseason team in your mind? You know what? Not yet. They're young. But I'll tell you what, with Dan Hurley, has got all the ingredients. Not only is he a competitor, he's smart, knows the game, but he also understands kids. Everything he does for his program, it's a lot like Shaka Smart. I think he emulates Shaka Smart. He takes care of his guys, you know, making sure that they're taken care of. And right there, he's he's fighting for, uh, as you see, Shaka Smart. Smart. Dan Hurley fighting for his team on that call, but not going to get it. Matthews lost it. Right back to VCU. Graham's back in. Handles here. Apparently the ankle's good enough for Travion Graham. Brooks for the freight train. Larrier. Freshman can't connect on the three. Allie Cox. Contact down low. And a foul call. You got Earl Watson going over the back, but that was a really nice move by Allie Cox. Just beat Watson to the punch. Watson tried to box out, but Allie Cox quick to the punch and got that rebound. Five team fouls already in the half here for Rody. Larry, a confident freshman from the Bronx. And he's got a lot of size. He's a tough guard. Graham, injured ankle and all, misfires on a three again. Out of bounds off of Jarvis Garrett, and VCU keeps it. Graham the step back. Bang! Travion Graham. Did he hit that jump shot and then sort of limped back. He looked pretty good on that one. Came down on that left foot, but he is favoring it a little bit. He's hobbled your right partner. But you got to give this kid defense. Give this kid credit. I mean. 38 3 of the year, Steve. He's got 13 tonight. He's gutting it out, no question about that. Reach as Watson was fouled in the paint. Well, you watch Trayvon Graham, watch his feet coming down, comes down flat footed. He, he is hurt, you can tell. He went down hard. But this is a true competitor. They have, right now, Rhode Island has Watson in the game. Rochelle had a great game, Rhino, and uh, there he goes to the, the scores table. So I think it's important that they get some inside presence with Bruda out of the game. And Hassan Martin with three fouls. Foul moment ago on Doug Brooks, his third for BCU. Matthew steps back, the lefty can't connect this time. It's out of bounds. Rams of Rhode Island keep it. Watson getting a couple minutes in there right now. And, and what Rhode Island's trying to do with 14.07 to play, they're trying to steal some minutes for Martin on the bench and Baruta on the bench. Now Rochelle in for Watson. Brand new shot clock. Matthews trying to find Buchanan, knocked out of bounds. 23 to shoot for Rhode Island here. That was a good give and go. Tipped out of bounds by VCU. And good defensive teams are always counting the deflections. It's another deflection by the BC Rams. You know, that gets tracked and watched in film sessions. Work part of the defensive effort, and really Rhode Island's defense has been outstanding tonight. Not so much about Havoc and all the steals they create for VCU. Buchanan hangs, tough shot. TJ Buchanan got half five points in the game here tonight. That was a nice spin dribble, was under control, used the glass. Young kids ought to watch T.J. Buchanan. He's very fundamental. You see right here, nothing for Matthews. He throws it right back out, goes in the paint, shields off the double team, and then spins and uses the backboard. Nice play by T.J. Buchanan. He just sometimes key, comes up with those key plays, you know, important plays for Dan Hurley. You've got to have seniors in big moments, and he is their leader. Knocked out of bounds off of Rhode Island a moment ago. Lewis with the long-range inbounds pass. Makes a nice catch. Head to head with Garrett. Looks like Ezekiel Elliott going after it. Oh, what a game he had last night for the Buckeyes. Wow. 
Oh, man. Graham spins and gets the roll. Travion Graham injured ankle and all up to 15 to lead all scores tonight. Well, he's a limping freight train, but he's still a freight train. Getting in the paint. Not derailed yet. Five big points in the second half for Travion. There's a foul call on VCU and Graham. Trivia Graham has that bad left wheel. He's blown a tire. He's shuffling a little bit. He comes down on it lightly. You can see him just picking it up as he runs back. That thing hurts. And, and the only thing I can say is that he's got to play and stay on it to keep it loose. Because if he sits down, it's going to tighten up. That's got to be what the VCU trainers told Shaka Smart. Keep him in there. Uh, I don't think anybody was going to tell Trivia Graham to come out of that game. He, he was coming back in. He told the trainer he could read his lips. I want to go back in. And watching this game and the ebb and flow of the game, it, it just seems like Rhode Island's up by 12 or 14, and they're not. They're only up by four. As Tillman swats that. Wow, Tillman says no. What a block that was. Feed that low and a finish for Brooks. Doug Brooks has his first buck of night. Sophomore from Lake Wales, Florida. All of a sudden, a two-point game. Davion Graham, I don't know what you say, 60, 70 percent. I mean, the ankle looks pretty bad there. Garrett drives way too strong. Michelle can't find it. Matthews does, hangs and hits. EC Matthews up to 15 tonight. Timeout. So we see the difference on offense for Travion Graham, but on defense, it's hard because you, you're struggling so hard on the defensive end. You got to stop the laying baskets. Forty-one thirty-seven game upset alert continues in Kingston. You get the feel, though. Steve Wolf have a great finish here tonight from the Ryan Center as we revisit the AT&T fast analysis. The two that could wreak havoc with havoc, as we talked about top of the broadcast. Matthews and Martin. Hassan's had foul trouble. Hassan's had foul trouble, but he is really the guy that set the pace for the defense for Rhode Island. And EC Matthews continues to come up with big passes. The scored on that last one to, to really to get the crowd back into the game. And, VCU is so combustible, so quick. And Trevion Graham banking it in as he limps back. 9.03 <laughs> is the local time, as Coach Gillen would say. And he's big around here, Coach of Providence. Oh, I love Coach, it. Right? Is that bank the banks open? are open. Make your deposit. I'll tell you, Dave, the bank's open. <laughs> <laughs> There's Martin Fallon. And we've got a break. 41-40 game. Big three for Graham. Off the glass a moment ago. 41-40 game here tonight in Kingston. Coming up next, road to the Final Four continues on CBS Sports Network. Kevin Alley, the reigning defending national champ. UConn Huskies headed to Tulsa, one of the hottest teams in the American Conference right here in the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Carter Blackburn, Pete Gill, and Jenny Dell are standing by for the Reynolds Center in Tulsa. Ryan Boatwright has been red hot of late for the defending champs. 12 double figure games. He had 18 in the win recently for UConn at Cincinnati. It seems like the Huskies are playing better basketball now. A well, boat ride just doesn't miss down the stretch. He is a strong, strong player. And you have to know that this is a team that's going to continue to get better and better as they get to the tournament. Pretty much going the same way as they did last year. Tulsa's won five straight. Frank Hate's first season leading the Golden Hurricane. Martin has one more free throw. UConn a three-game win streak. It's the longest of the year for the Huskies at 9-5 and five coming into that game tonight. UConn's first ever trip to Tulsa. New American Conference rivals. One of two for Hassan Martin. Pressure defense. Oh, Buchanan. Smart play. Michelle for two. Boy, Buchanan, what a great play. Defense to easy offense. Brooks bounces and Tillman fell on the way up. And Justin Tillman will shoot a couple here for VCU. Well, VCU is shooting themselves in the foot. You'll see like a dribble handoff. It's a, just a, a mix-up going down the court. 
The ball's tipped away by Rochelle, but you got to give credit to Buchanan. Good control and pushing the situation, making sure they're not casual with the ball and they're forceful against his VCU defense. The freshman only shooting 54.5%. Justin Tillman only 12 of 23 now in the season from the line. You can it out with the three fouls. What a high five you got from Dan Hurley a moment ago on the Rhode Island bench. Wow, Dan Hurley's into it. You can hear it over here. 0 for 2. Graham injured, kept it alive for a moment. So Willis Reed type effort for Travion Graham tonight. Now, Travion Graham, since he got hurt though, he's three of four from the field. The two threes, including a Pete Gillen back more jump shot. <laughs> but now it's defense that's going to really have to rule the game for VCU. They have to stop the interior game of the Rhode Island Rams. Garrett, lefty bounce pass. Martin, nice catch in traffic. Rochelle kept it alive. Hassan Martin had a block, but a foul called down low on the youngster, Justin Tillman. Well, Rochelle missed the tip. It was a nice pass inside. Martin misses the lefty. Rochelle misses the tip, but Hassan Martin going against Graham, fighting on the low block. And really, I, I think it's worth making make mention of this is that Graham is not as explosive going off that left foot. But give the credit to Martin for sticking with it. Wow, not close there for Martin. He only shoots 59% from the free throw line coming to the game here tonight. <laughs> it looks like one of yours this afternoon, quite frankly. Oh, come on now. <laughs> from the left side. You were saying <laughs> earlier what a great shooter I yeah, was. Oh, the first couple, boy. I'll tell you what, they got to get the little oh, arch on. I had my dress through. shoes on. It's not fair. Oh, man. Get in there. You had your workout gear on. <laughs> I mean, distinct advantage, I, Mr. Wolf. I, I, I wasn't a whole lot better. That's the truth. <laughs> Martin is the second. Five point game from Kingston tonight. Upset alert. 17th ranked VCU, an eight game win streak coming in, in trouble. Graham injured. Spins, had it blocked away. Martin again on the rejection. Matthews runs. Foul. Graham getting into the lane on the offensive end. And Rochelle plays great man defense. And then the help by Hassan Martin. And then EC Matthews. Doing what they did in the beginning of the game, just taking it to the heart of the defense. Nobody's stepping up to stop the ball for VCU. And in transition, the first rule is stop the ball. One more for Matthews. Leads the way with 16 points tonight. A foul moment ago on Burgess, his fourth. You see a perfect four for four from the line so far. 17.2 points a game in the win streak for Matthews. And he's up to 17 points. Reigning A-10 player of the week for good reason. Weber. Shaka Smart wisely calls a timeout to avoid the turnover. Well, we had breakfast with Shaka this morning. The team hotel was our hotel as well here in Kingston. And he said, I've got a bad feeling about this one because now that we're playing so well, last couple years, everyone gives us their best shot. And we know Rhodey's playing great basketball. It's going to be a tough game. He was right. Yeah, and this is, as you said earlier this evening, is this is the biggest non-Providence related game at the Ryan Center in quite some time. And I also think that Shaka Smart, you know, it has a lot of respect for Dan Hurley, as does Dan Hurley for Shaka Smart. But right now, Rhode Island is on a 6-0 run it's uh, the 10 minute mark, so I think that if you're Dan Hurley, you got to be pretty impressed with the way your team has come out and counter punched the Havoc defense. Allie Cox. Larrier. Right low block. Allie Cox blocked again. Hassan Martin's been everywhere offensively for Rhode Island. Wow. And that was, that was very important because Hassan Martin has three fouls. That would have been a real killer. But Ali Cox did not go into Hassan Martin. You got to use your body on a block, shot block. You can't just try to go over top.
Foul call there. Martin's got four rejections in the game tonight. Watch how Hassan Martin goes straight up. Ali Cox needs to go into him. Martin just goes over top and blocks the shot. That is very good defense and very good timing by Hassan Martin. Second foul on Garrett. Offensive foul, moment to go. Larry almost walked. Ali Cox is open on the low block. They need, if you're going to get the get Martin out of the game, you got to take it to him. Johnson foul of the way up. I like what VCA, VCU's doing. They're getting the ball into the post. They're driving, they're penetrating, they're, they're being forceful on the low block, going out of San Martin and putting the three ball away. Knock down a couple, Larry hit one, Rand hit two, but you can't live and die by that three ball, especially when you're down by seven in the second half. Johnson shoots 89% for the line, coming in. Only one for four in the game tonight. He struggled there. He and Graham are the only two VCU players in double figures in scoring coming in. So we talked about with Havoc, 10, 11 guys may play. It's a very deep bench. Shaka Smart told us today that even as we get into conference play, I'm not probably going to short the bench much. I'm going to use the 10 guys through most of A-10 play because we need those sorts of minutes with Havoc. Johnson misses two. Wow. Well, he can use those 10 guys as, because what he's done the last four or five years has increased his ability to get great talent. The shovel lead. Buchanan, a better pass to Martin. Oh, a hammer for Hassan Martin. See the double team, a jump pass for Shell. Nice pass, and another one from Buchanan, Dasan Martin. That is great ball movement, great interior passing, and that is why it's a nine point lead for the Rhode Island Rams. Beautiful ball movement, good anticipation. That's how you beat Havoc. That ties their largest lead. An 8-0 Ram run from Rhodey. Twenty-seven forty-one after only trailing 18 seconds of the prior seven. All VCU wins. So this is a very experienced, well-coached VCU Ram team. This game is not over by a long shot. The difference in this game and some of the Rhode Island games I've seen, the crowd is involved in the game. The momentum shifts to VCU, and Rhode Island comes back and counter punches and gets the crowd back into it. Johnson a three, rattles out. Alec Cox with a uh, nice putback. Mo Alec Cox has half a dozen tonight for VCU. Very smart play by Hassan Martin, not trying to get the, the foul. And good defense by VCU and creating a turnover in the half court. 12th Rhodey turnover tonight. Jaquan Lewis is back in for VCU. Dan Hurley said it a number of times today. Don't be casual with the ball. Biggie Menace that time was casual with the ball to an off balance pass. You know, now and again, you'll get away with jumping and passing, but it's very tough against this defense. Jared Guest, trouble. And Matthews gonna be called there for the foul. Only the first on E.C. Matthews today. We'll see right here. You see that Matthews coming in there. I'm not sure about that call, but hey. Trevian Graham now back in the game for VCU. So not much rest. As a team, BC only shoots 63% from the line. They are three of 12 tonight for the free throw line. Front end of the one and one, and finally, some good news from the strike for Larrier. The freshman has five points in the game. I'm really impressed with Larrier. He's just got so much potential to play all five positions. 
Doesn't That's get through on the second, though. That's important. They got Mick, uh, Guinness in the corner. He gets out of it. Look at the hands by Weber. Incredible. Dennis was caught in that corner and just split the trap. Brought it down court. It's, it's almost like when you get out of the trap, you got to run like your like your hair's on fire. Briante Weber, partner, is one of the quickest players I've ever seen play. I mean, this guy is athletic. He's got a 48 vertical jump. 48, yeah. yeah. We watched him today in the shoot around. It was incredible. It's, it's phenomenal. And he's a great kid, but he is quick. I mean, you have to be paranoid when you play against him. Graham with the injured ankle out here for VCU. With an immediate timeout coming now, you got to figure Jacques Smart want to get a little extra rest for the stretch run. There's a the bump. Foul call against VCU. Only a six point game. Upset alert continues in Kingston. Let's recap. Steve Wolf with the AT&T game summary. Points in the paint were so key at halftime. 34-22, the Rhodey Rams dominant in the lane. Hassan Martin, look at his the, the statistics. It's not a big deal, but he's had four blocks. He set the tone defensively for this Rhode Island team. They realize if they get beat in the paint, there's somebody back there to help out. And then they have just moved the ball so well against this havoc pressure. 8.7 rebounds, four blocks for Hassan Martin in the game. So far tonight, so Steve Wolf. We have 7.55 to go. Upset alert is in full alert here for VCU. 17th ranked team in the country, the eight game win streak. What does each team have to do to try to win this game? Well, I think VCU has got to continue going inside. URI has got to do the same thing, but they got to take care of the basketball. They've gotten a little skittish lately. The last thing is, is that if VCU is still down. URI has got to make their free throws. Matthews fouled before the break. This is front end of the one and one. So Graham back in as we thought he would be with the injured ankle. Leads the way with 18 points tonight for VCU. And he's bumped there by Buchanan. That's TJ's fourth foul. Last couple possessions, URI has had some fouls that probably shouldn't have. You don't want to reach, you know, when you're at the end of the game, you want to make smart decisions. One of the few guys you don't want to put on the free throw line is Trevion Graham. This guy's a competitor, and he's a shooter. Now they're in the one and one. Does not get a roll. Double bonus here, two free throws for Travion. He's been a double figures in all. Now 17 games this year for VCU. And what a busy summer, as he talked to us today. He had three different camps, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and the Chris Paul skill camps. Got to play CP3 in one-on-one -on -one and took him down to a very tight game. He lost, but he said it was a lot of fun. Havoc, a steal. Lewis in the corner. Larrier, whoa! Not close. Talk about dodging a bullet right there. URI, another turnover. That would have really been a problem if Larry would have knocked down that three. Big misses at the free throw line for Travion Graham. VCU's four for 16. From oh, look out below, Hassan Martin with the monster hammer dunk. Oh my! <laughs> wow! Allie Cox with the answer. How athletic is Hassan Martin? I mean, he is really, he's been phenomenal. I mean, really, his defense has impressed me. His passing, not so much. Here comes Havoc. The pressure defense is relentless for 40 minutes. Well, the give and go. Allie Cox late getting to the, the weak side help, but nothing was going to stop the high flying Hassan. It's a great view. I'm coming right at the basket. He's had three big hammer dunks tonight, and we mean way up there. And as I said last time, uh, URI has been just a little bit sloppy on this end of the court lately, and there's a chance for an and one for Larrier. Terry Larrier, chance for a three-point play for the freshman from the Bronx. That's a big play. All of a sudden, it's cut to four, and the Rhode Island Rams. Relenting a bit to the pressure defense of Havoc. 
Barutas is back into the game. Baruta with his four fouls. Haven't seen him since two minutes into the second half. Larry is one for four from the free throw line of the game tonight. This isn't the first rodeo for VCU. You know, they haven't folded the tents. They realize they're still in the game. With this havoc defense, they are in almost every game. I mean, you have to be up by 20, you know, with less than five minutes, because they are solid. Weber gets closer to the all-time steals record. Bounces out for Brooks. Needs some help. Stolen right back by Biggie Minutes. Not a good decision there by Doug Brooks to leave his feet. That was good defense by URI, but that would have been a tough. Brooks was wide open for that three. He'd been better off shooting it. Matthews, front iron. Brooks, big defensive rebound, makes up for the turnover. What a box out by VCU. <laughs> Just black jersey shoving guys all over the place. And a timeout for shot this one. Six to go in the second half. Year six, Shaka Smart, postseason all five prior years, CBI champs in 2010, and of course the magical Final Four run for BCU in 2011. Third round of the NCAA the next two years, last year an early exit. Just the second round for BCU, but still what a run it's been, complete turnaround. And if you talk to the VCU folks, basically Shaka's got a lifetime contract for VCU. There's a new practice facility that opens in September. Things have completely turned around in Richmond for the Rams. And I, what I like about it is I think he's made it okay to stay at a smaller university as far as basketball, uh, you know, pedigree. And he has been able to build that. And that's I think that's what you look for at Danny Hurley at Rhode Island. You know, when you're looking at a league that has half of their coaches has over 200 wins, they got two potential Hall of Famers coaching at Martelli. You know, you know, Barry McCollum is, 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 a, is a great coach at Davidson. You've got some great coaches in this league. Why leave? Weber needs some help. Eight to shoot. Graham, 4-3. 21 of the game and three threes for the injured Travion Graham. Credit Briante Weber with that. Threw it back out. It was a step out three. And credit Weber again. Lost out of bounds. Rochelle thought it was knocked out there by Mo Alley Cox. It's going to be VCU ball. You see right here a step in three. It's the easiest shot to shoot. The ball's coming right back to you. Briante Weber really picking up the game. We've talked about how he needs to pick it up. And the best time to do it, I guess, is in the last eight minutes. 43's made on the year for Travion Graham. Three tonight. Johnson lost the handle. Terrell, whoa, way off in the layup. Tips, not there. A big miss in transition and a tie-up call. Ball go the other way to VCU. Position at VCU. Grant thought he was fouled. Well, that was a, just lost the handle on that, going to the basket. It was a wasted opportunity, but Drell lost it out of his hands. Nobody really following back. Martin is lucky he didn't get a, get a foul called on that. And Graham did the best he can to avoid landing on the injured ankle. Sprained left ankle for Travion Graham, but he's playing through it. Watch Ollie. Been fantastic tonight. Ali Cox was wide open in the paint. And they missed him. Yeah, Larry tried for the tough reverse layup. Couldn't convert. Martin a loose change. It's important for Rhode Island to get a good shot at the basket. That means going to the basket. Ideally, it would be Martin on the low block, getting the ball in the hands of E.C. Matthews. He is your go-to guy. Terrell spins in the paint. Tough shot. Back iron. Can't get a roll. Tip is there for Terrell. Wow, what a quick leap to get his own offensive rebound. That's a big play for, for Terrell. A freshman from outside Boston has four points tonight. Johnson lines up a long three. Whoa, raising the twine, but the loose change picked up and put in. Johnny on the spot. 
Graham Wonderful. has been really the whole offense for this team right now. Wayne Hurt, he's got 23 tonight. Matthews in the corner. There's three more. DC Matthews gets the credit for the shot, but Give Menace the credit for the nice dish. Matthews and then Terrell. Good hustle, good stick back. In order to win a game against a team like VCU, you have to have some superhuman efforts, and right now you're getting it from the Rhode Island Rams. It's been Matthews against Graham. It's like a heavyweight fight. Haymakers landed by each, and only one can stand at the end. These teams have won a combined 14 straight between them. Something's got to give tonight. It's been fun to watch. It's been fun to watch, and I think that if you're Dan Hurley in Rhode Island, this is what you want your identity to be. Right now, you look at VCU, they have an identity. Rhode Island doesn't. They're looking to make sure that people know that they can counter punch, and they've done so for 37 minutes. Graham on the handle. He's got 23 tonight. Tough shot in traffic. Side of the backboard. Regained it. Then had strip. Garrett on the move. Bouncing Terrell. Look out below. Johnson the response. Melvin Johnson the step back three. His second triple of the game. He's got nine tonight. And there's a reason VCU has an eight game win streak and a number four RPI rating heading into the game here tonight. They are really good. Weber almost had that pick from behind. Yeah. Right now, it's important. The ball's in the hands of the guy that needs to have it for Rhode Island. EC Matthews is going to try another three ball. Short this time. And Graham. With the injured ankle up for the rebound. Here's Weber. Johnson in the corner. Lewis needs help. Graham again for three more. Can you believe Travion Graham? A straight on three. He has worked so hard on that three point jumper this summer. Four threes and 26 points in the game tonight for the injured Travion Graham. And for the first time since the 17 02 mark of the first half, when it was 7 5, VCU is ahead in this game. Matthews travels and it's going right back to VCU and we return possession of the lead. VCU on the road trying to stretch the win streak. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. 11 Rhode Island turnovers this half for a 19-9 VCU run. 17 total turnovers have led to great possessions like this conversion. The three ball from Melvin Johnson got the roll going. And how about Travion Graham, Steve? Injured ankle and all, another three ball. I'll tell you what, this guy has a lot of heart. You know, all the things that VCU does during the summer in their training camp, the way they, they, they just run their program. This is what Trevion Graham is getting out of it. It's all heart and hustle, and he's limping. I mean, it's clear he's limping on the court. He said in great experience at the Kevin Durant Skills Academy, he said KD plays hard all the time. He learned that from Kevin Durant. And Trevion Graham doing just that tonight through the injury. Now, if you want to play at VCU, you better learn to do that or don't come to the university. I mean, that's just what they do. Shaka Smart coaches hard, and these guys play hard. Rhode Island has to extend out on the jump shooter. Got to stand, get a, a hand out on all the jump shooters because although they're 8 for 24, they can knock them down. Seven to shoot. Graham drives. Here's Johnson. Hangs. Can't hit. Way short. Well, the rebound. Here come the Rhodey Rams. 
the end of the game, Buchanan is going to be in there. He plays as many minutes as a starter. And you see him getting the foul on Graham. Graham cannot laterally move because of that bad left wheel. Two fouls on Travion Graham. Nine team fouls. So one and one here for Buchanan. The free throw shooter about 79%. Playing with four fouls. Misses. Rebound for Graham. He's got eight boards in the game at 26 points. And here's Weber. Your VCU, I think you continue to go inside. Rhode Island, no need to foul. It's a one point game. You're fine. You got to play good, solid half court defense. But no question, Rhino, you get the ball in the hands of number 21 each time down the court. Johnson is struggling. Under 10 to shoot. Here's Graham. Under a minute in regulation. Weber with five to shoot. Briante Weber in trouble. Way off. Comes to Ellie Cox. And he slams it home. Both Rhode Island defenders went after the block. Nobody there at home plate. Ali Cox with an easy two-hand dunk. Good drive by Weber. Good defense by E. See Matthews, but Hassan Martin coming over for the block. Both guys up in the air. Nobody coming down to get Ali Cox. That's a big play. Boy, it sure was. Martin had yet another block in the game tonight. He's got a double double already tonight, and now five blocks. Well, here's the problem right now as you sit there and you look, trying to get the ball up court. 36 seconds left playing against this VCU defense. You have to be aggressive. You don't need to go for the three ball. You need to get in the paint. You need to drive. Maybe get an old fashioned three. Right now, they're one of seven from three point land, uh, Rhode Island is. No reason to go ahead and be one for eight. Could be a clock adjustment here, possibly. The officiating crew looking at the replay on the missed free throw on the front end of the one and one from TJ Buchanan. I'll make sure they've got the time. Well, that, that, 30, that 35 second clock didn't start. But that was not the case. The regular clock did start. So I don't think there's going to change anything. Team of the double bonus. Each team one timeout. UConn Tulsa from the Reynolds Center. American Conference showdown coming up. As soon as we wrap up, business here from Kingston. It's been a while since I've heard this place rocking like this. It's good to see. I called last year's Providence College game. Here in this building, went down on the wire. Matthews missed a shot, the Friars won. It sort of felt the same way. With the energy here tonight, it's been something. And once again, I'm, you get the ball into minutes or EC Matthews' hands, and then get something going downhill into the paint. No need to go for that three. There's a lot of time. ECU on a 9 1 run. Racing a five point deficit. Matthews. He's looking for that three. He's hunting the three ball, but now you got to break him down and go to the basket. Need some help. Travels. Turnover right back to VCU with 15.2 seconds left in regulation. Well, you'll see right here nothing for the three ball. You see. Moving that other pivot foot, you can't pick it up. You know, I really believe you get that two ball. There's no reason to take the three. It hasn't been good to you tonight. Get that two and then play defense. 18th turnover of the night against Rhodey. And guess what VCU forces a game? 17.9 turnovers. Foul call on Matthews. Weber's gonna shoot free throws here. 11.7 seconds remaining. See, I, you know, you, you get the two, you, you foul, because this is a team right now, VCU, that is mired 
in poor free throw shooting. They're shooting 29% tonight. You know, use the old Jim Valvo, the Valvano approach. You know, foul him, put him on the line. Won a national championship, it was pretty good for him, right? Weber shoots 85%, though. He's a good one. And he shoots two here. Perfect. UConn Tulsa. Get you there as soon as possible. That game has just started for the Reynolds Center on the Tulsa campus. Golden Hurricane, a five-game win streak, defending that, defending that. Something quick and get a timeout. Here's Buchanan. Terrell, front iron miss. Timeout. Matthews lays it in. And the last timeout called by Rhode Island of the game. 22 tonight for E.C. Matthews to lead Rhodey. Trevion Graham playing hurt. Injured ankle there. T.J. Buchanan undercuts him as an accidental. Contact there, hustling. Buchanan committed the foul, but Graham has been absolutely fantastic. Get four threes tonight, 26 points to lead all scorers. Actually, before he got hurt, he was struggling a little bit. He has come back and just lit it up from behind the arc, uh, you know, getting inside and making good hustle plays, knocking down his free throws. But you expect that from the leader that Trevion Graham is. VCU trying for its ninth straight win. The most ever victories consecutive. Undershock is smart 13 a couple years back. Rams with a four RPI rating. And right now, you got a foul. You might even foul before the ball gets thrown in. Weber's bumped by Matthews. They want to get the ball course to Briante Weber, their best free throw shooter, who just nailed two in a row and didn't hit any rim with two swish free throws. I saw, I was watching the Texas A&M game. Uh, against UK and that Cal Perry fouled before the ball went in. He fouled the worst free throw shooter. I like that approach uh, because, you know, you don't want to put this guy shooting 85%, like you said, barely even hit the, the net on his last two. They're perfect. Shooting two and gets the roll. Now it's a two possession game. It's all over but the Bengay right now. Our apologies for our brief technical problems we've experienced here tonight from Kingston. Weber hits the second. All four down the stretch for Briante Weber and VCU, and they were challenged tonight by Rhode Island. Buchanan's layup will not count. Five-point win for Shaka Smart and VCU. They've won nine straight games to move to 14 and three overall and four and zero in the A-10. It's Rhodey's first A-10. Loss and a six game win streak comes to an end for Rhode Island. Final score again 65 60 for Steve Wolf and the entire crew. I've been Brian saying so long. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Now to Carl Blackburn, Pete Gillen, and Jenny Dell in Tulsa.